Hi everyone, so I'm back from a Belize trip and I'm so excited to be back in the kitchen with you. And of course, the first thing that I wanna to do today is recreate the recipe that Miriam taught me, the panucho. But instead of doing it with chicken, I'm gonna try it with beef. You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. So let's take a look at the ingredients that we're gonna to need to make the masa. We have three pounds of masa right here, but we're gonna split this, we're gonna divide it, okay? We're gonna use like a pound to go in a call and two pounds to make the panucho itself. So to the masa, we're gonna add our powdered ricotta, or of course you can exchange this for paprika or paprika. And I've got three tablespoons of flour, and for those of you who ask, well, why put flour with corn? This is the way Miriam taught me how to do it when we did the sabu this, and it's to bind everything, because sometimes this comes a little bit too moist. We've got some salt, and it's only like a teaspoon. You don't need a whole lot. And then we've got a couple teaspoons of baking powder to put inside the, the masa or the dough, however you want to call it. And of course, we have this, which is the panada smasher. And I don't know where you guys would get this in your local area, but I get it from my regular supermarket, which is called Food for Less here in California. And that's where I picked it up years ago. They have some that looks shinier, doesn't look as dark and cast iron as this. You get it at your local flea market or your swap meats and stuff. And it's, get the one that's to squish corn because they have a wooden one that they're selling that's to squish flour tortilla. And you don't want that one. You want the one to squish corn. Now, let me show you a little trick that I learned. Remember when I did the salbutes or the panadas before, I just kind of cut a regular grocery bag from my local market and put it for the bottom. Then you kind of put the masa in there, put the top and you squish it, right? Well, I I'm always having to cut these bags. I learned something new when I went to Belize. Miriam taught me that if you get like a big old, I call it a Ziploc bag, but you guys know Ziploc is actually a brand. It's not the bag, so it's a reclosable. I think that's what it is, a reclosable bag, not necessarily, not necessarily Ziploc brand. And you just cut the one gallon one apart. You put a piece there. You put your masa, you put the top, and you squish, and you have this clean bag all the time to use and reuse as you see fit. You can also wipe this off and put it up. So I was glad that she taught me that little trick. When I told my mom, she says, oh, I knew that a long time ago. But of course, she never shared it with us, right? I'm going to get my mom. So anyways, let's split this apart. And the reason why we want, we don't have to put any spice to this because this is going to go for the color, right? So let me set that apart. I'm going to go on in here. We're going to add our baking powder, our flour, our salt, all powdered stuff if you notice. And we're gonna sprinkle this according to how red we want this to come out. And this is just the bottom parts, the outer shell of our panucho, or if you're making salbutes, you would squish this for the salbutes and you would also squish this in a panades masher to make panades. Okay, before we move over to the stove, let me show you that we're gonna make it with ground beef and I'm only using a little bit because I don't want a whole lot of the panucho today. And I have some washed cilantro. You know I do everything with cilantro. I love the taste of cilantro. And I've got some diced onions that I pre-prepared. And some of this half and half is gonna go into this meat recipe because the next half of this is gonna go into the cull. So I just wanted to show you guys that. And then let's move over to the stove because that's where the rest of the stuff is gonna happen now. So first of all, let's deal with the cull. I have this pot, it's a five quart pot. And it's only like to the halfway mark with water. I'm gonna turn my heat on or my fire on. I'm gonna put it on high because you want this to start boiling. And then I'm gonna take half of this dose of cilantro and about half of the onion. You're just gonna eyeball it. It's not exactly half. We're gonna drop it in there to make the cull. And we're gonna let that cook for a little bit, not too long, five, 10 minutes before we start adding other ingredients to it. So while we're doing that, let's move over to the left-hand side of the stove to see what we're doing with our ground beef. So all I've done here is put the ground beef in this pot and I'm using the potato masher to just kind of separate it because I want it to become loose meat. So this pot likes to get really, really hot. It's gonna start frying up and getting brown in a little while and I want it to be as loose as it could be, kind of like when we're making meat pies. So to this, I'm going to add some of that onion and the cilantro. Of course, you could add other things like peppers and 
other things that you like, okay? Anything to make your meat spicy. You know that I try to keep things pretty simple in here and that's because I don't like too many things to overwhelm the taste of my palate. I want to actually taste the food. As I told you, I'm going to add onion and cilantro to this. This is where you want to add peppers and stuff if you're going to do peppers. This is going to be the inside of our patty to make our panucho. So this is all we want to do. Just basically cook this ground beef like loose meat. If you were doing it with chicken, you would cook the chicken from the day before like stewed chicken, especially the bony parts, the backs and stuff. And then you would pick that from the bone and then you'd put the chicken as your filling, okay? But I don't want to do it that way because Miriam already gave it to us like that, so I wanted to change up the meat when we recreate it. So this is just going to cook and get brown and we want to make sure it stays loose. So every now and again, we're going to come with the squisher and we're just going to squish it like that to loosen it up. This is what I do. I don't know what other people do to make their ground beef stay loose, but this is what I do. <laughs> I use this trusted potato masher or squisher and I'm just going to do that with it and it gets the meat really loose. And in the meanwhile, we have the cull that's being cooked on the other burner, okay? So you're gonna be hearing this fry every now and again. As we cook this, we're gonna add water a little bit at a time to that just to make it cook and not burn, but we're not gonna add a whole lot of water because we don't wanna make soup. So in the meanwhile, I'm gonna move over to the counter while all this is going on and get the masa prepared for the cull. Okay, so remember this is the one pound of masa that we separated from the batch. And I'm just going to put a little bit of water in there. And you want to do this in a big bowl like I'm doing because this likes to kind of, if you squeeze it, it kind of spins and make a mess. So you don't want to do it in too small of a bowl. And all you're going to do is get your hand in there and kind of make this into a paste. Because we're going to put this through a strainer into that pot for the tamales call, okay? So, just gonna proceed with this and you take it slowly, don't rush. Sometimes I think when we do foods and we kinda rush, that's when we run into problems with making a mess or making it not come out so good. So, take your time and get this part done. Slowly. So here's another step to making this dish. And if you're doing panadas, or salbutas, you'd want to do this too. You get it and you roll it into these little balls. And you remember when we were little and you used to play jacks? They're like twice the size of a jacks, a jack ball or a jacks ball. I'm just making these little balls for the top and the bottom of the dish that we're making, okay? Now everything that I'm doing extra is happening while the stuff is being cooked on the stove, all right? So there's stuff happening while I'm doing these other things like rolling off these masa balls or squishing that masa into a paste to go into the cull. So there's stuff going on, including Joe coming from the store and trying to sneak in and not make his keys make noise. <laughs> you know, when I'm doing the show, that kind of stuff stresses me out when they come in and you hear a door squeal and you s they sit in a recliner and you hear the thing click. And that kind of stuff bugs me when I'm doing the show, but I'm going to stop letting it bug me and I'm going to start putting them in the show so you guys can know that it's happening in my real home in real time. And yes, sometimes I'm doing the show for you guys and my family is over here going, oh, by the way, I'm rolling this, this thing. If you see my arm going, my family's over here going, when are we going to eat? Can I get in the kitchen? When are you going to be done with that? <laughs> Come on, Joe, say hi. What did you buy for me? Buy some ice. Show the ice. Show the ice. See, Joe bought some ice. Here's the duck. Duck so you can see you. <laughs> Just bought some ice, getting ready to make some ice cream. All right. So I guess we'll be doing a show on ice cream real soon. I don't know what flavor we're going to be doing, but I want to do soursop. And I know it's called something else in Spanish. I can't say the word if I have to look at the can or something to say the word like guanyabanya or guananyabars. I can't say it. I'm going to have to look. So don't scream at me, all right, if I'm not saying it right. But in the meanwhile, we're making panucho until we move on to something else. So see, that's been going for like 10 minutes. So the onions and the cilantro are already getting soft. So what we want to go ahead and do now is start adding some of our ingredients. So here's a secret ingredient that a lot of Belizeans don't know about. El pato, the salsa, the chili fresco. This is what we put in there. 
it gives it some color and it's spicy it kicks it up a notch so what I'm gonna do now is get a strainer I'm gonna go ahead and put that the masa that I diluted into this pot okay so I can't find my big strainer I hate when people use my tools and they don't put it back so we're gonna put this masa right here just gonna strain it through because we want to get rid of the lumps this is all we're doing. And remember that we want this cold to be a little bit thinner than when we're doing tamales, okay? So I'm gonna decide if I'm gonna use all this masa that I melted down into a paste. I may not need the whole thing if I want the cold to stay thin. And so far you see that I've put quite a bit in. And let me see how it's feeling. Definitely gonna need more. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue putting it in. Okay, and you wanna move fast because you don't want lumps to come in, all right? So this is our cull. It's very thin. I use all that masa. It was about a pound. And I put the fire on low right now. I'm going to let it cook. Whatever these lumps are, they're going to cook away. And let me tell you guys a little trick. Let's say, for instance, you're working this and these lumps are not going away. And you'll get the lumps if you don't move fast enough when you're putting the masa in, OK? And just know I couldn't move fast enough because I had that small strainer. But if you get these lumps and you keep doing this and they're not all going away, just get a skimmer and skim the lumps off of the top. There's no hard thing about that. Don't get all freaked out and stressed out and all that stuff when cooking or you'll never enjoy cooking, all right? There's always a remedy to everything. You know, Joe told me that the mark of a good cook is one that can actually cook and make the food taste good, but the mark of a great cook is the one that can turn the things that have gone bad around, you know, turn that ship around and fix the problem. And what I sprinkled in there just now was some red powder ricotta. And of course, if you guys don't have access to that, you can use paprika or paprika. And if you want ricotta, you can contact my dad at bluefield-prod.com and he can sell that to you too. He ships out to anywhere, I think. So we're just gonna work this. We're not gonna put the peas in yet because we want to get these lumps to go away. We're going to add a little bit of salt and black pepper to this just to taste. And the last thing that we're going to put in is the peas. Okay, we're not going to put any tomatoes, but in the meanwhile, we're going to want to keep this thin like this. It's going to cook down a little bit thicker. And I'm going to monitor to see if I'm going to need to get these lumps out, but so far they're kind of wasting away. And I'm keeping the fire on low, okay? And we're going to add the peas right to the last of doing this. In the meanwhile, let me show you guys. Let me see if I can pan. I got a new tripod and it says that you can pan smoother, but I don't think it's working. It's not budging. So let me pause and come back to my other and pot. And this is my pot with the ground beef and I've added water once to it already. And I'm gonna add a little bit more right now. And see, it's a little bit of water. Just add it in so that it doesn't burn. You kind of move it around. And basically this is loose ground beef. And the only thing that I'm going to add to this is salt and pepper right towards the end. But we want this to cook for at least, I'd say, 40 minutes to make sure it's cooked. And this is your loose ground beef. And this is, you could actually prepare this like the day before, you know, to make this job a little bit more easy. In the meanwhile, while the cull and the ground beef is still cooking, I'm going to move back to the counter and start squishing the masa so we can pr start preparing for our um, panucho, okay? Now I have the camera off to the side here again. Now I've laid out a couple pieces of just paper towel. I see people in Belize use like a clean dish towel. I don't have any dish towel that I want to forfeit to staining with this, what this masa is going to do, okay? So I have one piece of the ball. I put this piece of paper down first. Then I'm going to put this next piece of topping because you don't want it to stick to your squisher. And just kind of squish it. So that's the bottom of the panucho. Just gonna peel it off of this and set it. That's no, that's where the Belize people would set it on a clean dish towel. But not me, because I want to save my dish towels. I don't want them to be stained because I use them for photo shoots and stuff, right? So we're gonna squish another one. And these are all the bottoms that I'm making, all right? And some of these are big, some of them are gonna be smaller. I don't think Miriam made them this big. See, that's too big. See, it's breaking up on me. So all you wanna do is just re-roll that. Is that a word? Reroll? Well, I just made it a word. So that one was a little bit too flat. So just kind of re-roll it. Put it in there again. And when I squish this time, 
Just make sure I don't go so flat, okay? So that's another bottom, or it could be a top. Like if I were ready to fry these already, it would be a top. So that's another bottom. So I've stepped, I've stepped aside so you guys can see that the cull is still cooking, the ground beef is still cooking. I mean, this is all in real time active right here. And so I'm just going to wait for a little bit for those to be done. Shut the cull off and just let it kind of simmer there for a minute. And then I'm going to start, I'm going to let the ground beef cool a little bit first before I start putting it inside the panucho, okay? And then we're going to move on to the next step, which is the frying of the panucho. Okay, so I have a good shot of my two pots right here. And what we're doing is, let me show you the ground beef. Let me grab some kind of utensil, show you the ground beef, see? It's about 40 minutes. I've allowed it to cook with no kind of gravy left behind. We want it kind of dry because this is going to be the insides of our panucho. So it's, it's pretty much done. I'm going to shut the stove off. I've added a little bit of salt and pepper just to taste. Not a whole lot because I don't use a lot of salt. And let me come over here to our cull. And that's on low. And I don't have any lumps at all in it because I used a skimmer to skim off any lumps that was being kind of aggressive from when I put the masa in, okay? So here we go. Just gonna stir it. It's kind of thick. If you can see, it's kind of thick, but not as thick as if we're doing tamales. What I'm gonna do now is open my peas, my can of peas. I don't wanna put it in there too early. Let me throw the water off. You know, sometimes I think we don't tell people every step of the way because we assume that everybody knows everything to know about cooking. But I never take things for granted. I have a recipe coming up soon in which I show you how to make jello. Because you might laugh and say, well, there's directions on the box. Everybody knows how to make jello, but it's not true. Every time Jaina makes jello, she always messes it up. And I know what she's doing wrong, so that's why I'm teaching it. So you guys cannot make the same mistake. And she's got it now, though. So just add the peas. Let it kind of simmer. I'm going to shut the stove off. I already add some salt and pepper to taste of that too. And now we want these things to kind of sit here and cool down for a little bit before we start messing around with preparing the rest of the dish, all right? So I'll be back in a few minutes when it's time to add the meat and fry it. And then we're going to put our topping and we're going to eat our panucho. All right, so what I'm doing here is using the skimmer just to get rid of any excess liquid. I don't want to do a strainer. We don't need a strainer because we didn't have too much liquid here. Listen to that stupid man outside selling something corn or something from his cart. Anyways, that's the noise that you hear with that horn honking outside. Just kind of get the kind of liquid off. That's our meat. And remember the cull is just going to be a topping, so we don't really need to bring that over to the counter, okay? Meanwhile, as my cousin Effie would say, meanwhile back at the ranch, <laughs> she always says that cute stuff, I don't know why. I want to put a little bit of the meat. We always want to go with less first to see what we're doing, all right? Remember, this is the first time that I'm really assembling one of these panuchas, okay? I only watched Miriam do it when I was in Belize. So we're going to take this as our topping because they, they look about the same size. And I had this covered up with paper because this will tend to crack on you. And she just kind of squished it with her fingers to seal it so it doesn't open up when we fry it, okay? She didn't squish it with a fork or anything, just with her fingers. So basically, I'm going to do the first two right here. And you're going to get as many as you prepared meat for or masa for, okay? So when you guys are asking how much it serves, I would imagine this amount that I did two pounds would only serve about five people at the most. Especially if you make them big like this one. So these are pretty much ready. I'm going to see if Joe will help me like to make off a couple more. These are pretty much ready to be fried. So what I'm going to do now is move to the stove and get my oil ready. And we're going to start frying these, all right? Okay, so I just have a little skillet there with some oil. And I'm going to put the first one in. Try to do it where you don't get burned, okay? And just let it fry. We're going to flip it to the other side in a few minutes, or a few, not even more than a couple of minutes. We're going to flip it. This is the first one still frying. It took like three minutes because I wanted it to be really crunchy. 
I'm going to take it out right now and get another one going in the pot, okay? It's beautiful though, right? Beautiful golden color. So here's the finished product. Let me show you my cull, my pot of cull right here. Just have the peas kind of simmering in there. You guys can see how thick this got, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and pour it over the panucho. So I'm so glad that I recorded what Miriam did or I would have totally forgotten the part about the cheese and, and I actually did forget that so I didn't tell you guys in the beginning but I'm so glad for Jada and for the video because she remembered. And Miriam used two type of cheese and I think one of them might have been mozzarella. So just use some type of cheese that melts pretty good. But for me I use pepper jack and sharp cheddar because those are the two cheeses that I happen to like. So there you have the finished product of the panucho. See what it looks like after the cheese is melted on the top? It looks awesome, huh? Now, as you can see, although there were a lot of steps to making this dish, none of the steps were really difficult to do and they didn't take too long. But in order to make things easier in the future when I make this dish again, I'm going to cook the meat from the day before. So that on the day that I'm making the panucho, all I have to make is the ma well, prepare is the masa and the kal. And as you guys can see, the cull that I use for this recipe is the same cull that we use when making the Belizean tamales. And I already have a video at the site about how to make tamales, okay? Except in this recipe, the cull is a little bit thinner because it's meant to be a topping, not a filling, okay? And remember, we didn't use peas and carrots, we used just peas. So this recipe was given to us, I say us because Miriam allowed me to share it with you on YouTube. She could have given me the recipe and say, it's just for you to make for your family, but don't share it on YouTube. Don't put it in your book. She didn't say that. She was so generous. She says, you can share it on YouTube. You can put it in any future book. And I'm so glad to give you the recipe and be a part of it. So I give her much credit. Miriam, thank you so much for the recipe for Panucho. I'm going to name it Beef Panucho because I'm going to make it with beef right now. But you guys know that it's Miriam's recipe. And when she gave it to us when I was in Belize, she made it with chicken. Anyways, we'll try it different ways in the future. So I'm back from my trip. I'm so glad to be back. I've missed you guys. Some of you have commented saying that you miss me and that feels so good to be missed, right? But anyways, the trip was pretty awesome. There were a lot of hurdles that we needed to overcome when we were there, but we overcame. Thank you guys for everybody who was praying. I'm so glad to be back here in California. So glad to be back in my beautiful kitchen and so glad to have new recipes to create. And for the few people that gave me recipes when I was in Belize, and for the few people who tried to give me recipes, somebody was trying to give me a recipe for a white relleno. And, you know, I'll get it eventually because it was all different type of ingredients being thrown at me. But eventually I'll get that recipe. But I want you guys to know when I went to Belize, I really thought I'd get a lot more recipes. Like I asked people how to make um, wangla, how to make stretch bigots, how to make um, kasham. You know, I was asking all these things and nobody knew. You know, and these people were young. They were like in their 40s and 50s and stuff. These people were not old, like 70s and 80s and can't remember how to do it. So we're just going to have to figure it out as we go along, okay? But a lot of people didn't want to give me their recipe when I went, and I respect that because they said that if I put it on the internet, it might hamper them from making money at the recipe in the future. And I respect that. But for the people who are willing to give me the recipes, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. You guys are so cool. Anyways, I'm back. Um, we're going to be recreating more things in the kitchen. I'm going to try to start uploading two videos a week again as soon as I can. The minute I got back from Belize, I was bombarded at the shop because you, you guys know we print plastic bottles for a living during the daytime, right? And I do this show on Saturdays and Sundays. But we were bombarded with a lot of work, so I couldn't get back in the kitchen right away. And I tried really hard to just get the, um, the footage from the trip itself edited and put it up there. You, uh, for those of you who don't know, I have two videos at the site already. With my Belize trip, it's called uh, Bear Pantry Show in Belize and Bear Pantry Show in Belize Part 2. I split it in two because it was just too long. And I just showed everything that we did, did to have fun. And of course, Belize have a lot more awesome things that you can do, but these are the things that we chose to do. Anyways, thank you guys so much for, their love, for your love and support. And until I see you guys again, take care.